Recently, we produced a podcast on reishi mushrooms and cancer. Today, we're going to follow up with some case studies from patients in the San Francisco Bay Area who used reishi mushrooms for conditions such as cancer, asthma, and chronic fatigue. So last week, we talked about uh, Dr. Leon, who is a charismatic Qigong practitioner who also used reishi mushrooms. And he said that his Qigong healing and reishi mushrooms would cure cancer. He claimed to have a 50% uh, success rate, although I never really saw anybody who was cured just by using his treatments. Um, and then I talked about uh, somebody named Dr. Ricky, who used a combination of herbal medicine, reishi mushrooms, nutritional medicine and energy healing. And he got very good results, particularly if people also used uh, Western medicine. So one of the people who came to our clinic, uh, his name was Ross, and he had uh, had testicular cancer as a young man. And it had, uh, he was actually a young, still a young man, but testicular cancer is common in young men. And uh, he was, I believe, in his early 20s. So he uh, had testicular cancer, but unfortunately he caught it late and it had metastasized to his brain. And so uh, he used a combination of Western medicine, including chemotherapy and radiation therapy. And he also went to Dr. Ricky for about uh, six months. And uh, basically uh, Ross did much better than all the other radiation and chemotherapy patients. And he started to tell his uh, oncologist, you know, he thought that the Dr. Ricky's treatments like the herbs and acupuncture were really helping. And the oncologist held up his hands and said, no, 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 I think you're better. You're doing so well because you're a young man and your body's very strong. Um, I don't want to hear, he basically said, I don't want to hear about alternative medicine. So uh, the funny thing, or maybe it wasn't so funny, but Rusk showed up to our door at our clinic um, in Oakland, California, mainly because unfortunately, Dr. Ricky was charging a lot of money. And um, I didn't recommend that many patients to, to Dr. Ricky because he basically charged, uh, it was hard to leave his office without being $500 to $1,000 poorer. And of course, insurance didn't pay for any of that because it's an alternative treatment. Uh, so he showed up, uh, Ross showed up at our door and he said, you know, uh, R Dr. Ricky's treatments are really working, but I just can't afford $500 every treatment. Is there something you could do? Um, and so basically what we recommended is uh, herbs in a tablet and capsule form. And that's because Dr. Ricky recommended reishi in capsule form and then bulk herbs, which uh, ch bulk Chinese herbs taste terrible. And so in addition to the money, um, Ross was um, motivated to stop drinking the terrible tasting tea. So we had a on a combination of herbs. Um, we used herbs like ginseng, astragalus, and reishi. And we also used blood circulating herbs. Uh, but he was doing so well, um, he stopped coming every week to see us. Uh, we didn't need to adjust the pres uh, prescription so much, the herbal prescription. And finally, uh, after about six months, he just used the herbs on a maintenance dosage. So typically when people come to see us in the clinic, we use a big dosage at first. And then as their condition gets better, we put them on a maintenance dosage. And, and I believe that maintenance dosage is really important for people with cancer to prevent reoccurrence and keep the immune system high. The next person I want to talk about is, a, a, is an acupuncturist. His name is Randy. And Randy's real problem was asthma. He, he tried to be an athlete, but at the time I saw him, he was going through a divorce. And so I recommended uh, sleep improvement, a sleep hygiene uh, program, as well as specific herbs to help him sleep. I recommended a stress reduction and exercise program. And uh, one of the herbal medicines I recommended was reishi. Now, you may have heard that reishi is very good for cancer and very good uh, for cancer patients and very good for immune problems, both autoimmune and people who have uh, immune deficient uh, uh, conditions. But one of the things you may not know is that Ganoderma or Reishi 
is fantastic for uh, allergies as well as lung problems. And so I've treated many patients over the years with pneumonia, uh, people with chronic bronchitis, emphysema, even a few people with tuberculosis. And reishi and other uh, uh, herbs have been a really big part of that. So uh, Randy uh, basically uh, took the herbs in uh, uh, tablet and capsule form, and it took about three or four weeks at the full dosage for him to start uh, getting better. So I do uh, feeling better. So I do want to make sure that if you do go down the route of herbs, that you don't expect instant results and that you give it enough time. And even though Randy was a practitioner, he called me up after a couple of weeks and says, you know, I don't think I'm getting anywhere. So just give it some more time, you know, make sure you're taking the correct dosage because that's important and surely you'll feel better. And after about three or four weeks, he started making uh, rapid progress. But I had to, you know, counsel him to not deplete all your energy. Start putting uh, extra energy in your health savings, your spiritual and your emotional health and physical health savings account. Uh, the next woman was Susan, and uh, she basically had chronic fatigue after breast cancer uh, treatment. And so um, uh, I treated her along with her acupuncturist. Uh, basically, her acupuncturist saw her, and then you know, she basically used our advisory service and, and, and asked me what to, what to recommend for Susan. And so she had a complete uh, breast cancer therapy. I believe her breast cancer therapy involved uh, uh, surgery, uh, some kind of um, uh, medical therapy, biological drugs, or chemotherapy, and uh, and then she was just really wiped out, really really tired. And so she, um, at, as soon as she left the hospital, her day pretty much ended at like ten o'clock, at ten a.m. in the morning. She was just so tired. And then uh, she came to the acupuncturist, who is a colleague of mine. And she started recommending uh, the woman uh, was luckily enough to have somebody to drive her to the acupuncturist. So she uh, went uh, twice a week for acupuncture. And then she uh, initially, she actually, although she had chronic fatigue syndrome, we couldn't use the herbs like reishi because she had a poor operating digestive system. So one of the important take-home messages is if you have digestive symptoms, really treat those first because reishi and other tonic herbs can actually exacerbate uh, uh, digestive conditions. So we treated her digestive system, uh, acupuncture twice a week. When her digestive system was uh, better after about a month or two, then we started reishi and some of the tonic herbs along with digestants because again, tonic herbs can be a little bit hard to digest. And within three to six months, uh, Susan was basically a new person, no longer needed acupuncture, no longer needed herbal medicine. Now, if it was my patient, I would really strongly suggest using herbs uh, as pre for prevention because she was a breast cancer patient, but she wasn't that interested. She was just interested in feeling better. And that's what was accomplished. And then the last patient I want to tell you about, his name is Brian. And when I saw him, he had an aggressive type of uh, prostate cancer. And uh, so most of the prostate cancer in the United States is relatively uh, benign. In other words, the treatment is often just wait and monitor and wait, and uh, hopefully it doesn't get worse. Or the person may die of other conditions before they die of prostate cancer. But in Brian's uh, uh, situation, it was um, not that not that easy, and so he was recommended to take radiation plus hormonal therapy for his aggressive prostate uh, cancer. And he came in to see me before the cancer uh, the treatments began because he was afraid that he'd be too weak to to drive himself to our office. And I recommended uh, reishi, um, prostate herbs and also pomegranate. And I want to, many of us, again, may not know that a pomegranate is very good for the heart, but also um, there's some evidence that it may help uh, reduce uh, prostate cancer uh, symptoms and reduce prostate cancer disease. Uh, maybe not as a sole treatment, but as an adjunctive treatment. And uh, when I saw Brian, he was very, uh, very, um, distraught because he was not given a good 
prognosis. And as a matter of fact, he's worried because he had a son who was in high school and a divorce, and, or not a divorce, but he was leaving his wife and a teenage son, and he was just afraid he was going to die. And so um, basically, I just said that there had been some positive, um, uh, positive direction in terms of herbs, and I'd see really good results with um, with prostate cancer, and that he should do the Western treatments, but add uh, reishi, pomegranate, and some other herbs to his Western medical treatment. And um, I didn't see him for about six months. Again, he was going through aggressive uh, radiation therapy and really wiped out. But he came in in six months and he said, wow, you know, my doctor was really impressed. He wondered what I was doing because, because I made it through the radiation treatments better than just about anybody else. And I really attribute it to the herbs. So you might want to know about what the best way of preparing reishi and using reishi. And as I mentioned in the case histories, that uh, I usually recommend reishi with other herbs. So I, Andrew, usually recommend reishi in pill or tablet form. I'm making sure that I'm using a supplier that does testing and that is known for their high quality ingredients. Um, and so I prefer the tablets uh, or, or capsules of reishi with other medicinal mushrooms or other tonic herbs. Now, the alternative is to use the whole reishi root. Uh, a woman uh, came up to me after I talked about reishi. She was an acupuncturist and she said, oh, my patient was so thankful. They gave me all this reishi mushroom and I don't know what to do. And I said, well, um, they look really nice. Uh, what you're going to have to do is clean them first. Then you're going to have to powder them. And then you need, uh, need to simmer them for about 12 hours. And then it's ready to drink. And she goes, wow, that's really involved. And I said, yeah, yeah. Uh, cooking with reishi is, is really difficult. Um, the other types are uh, infusion of reishi, and I wouldn't recommend that unless you're using uh, concentrated powders. So if you do find in uh, from a practitioner or a, a herb store powdered reishi, just and you can use that as an instant uh, tea, uh, you can use that, but you want to make sure that, again, they're using an extract that they've already cooked and prepared the reishi, and then you want to make sure they're using the correct genus and species. So uh, this concludes our podcast today on case studies with reishi. I think some of the take-home messages are always use uh, reishi with other uh, herbs and nutritional treatments. It's best to use uh, reishi under professional supervision. And then finally, if you do use reishi, make sure that your supplier has a reputable source and does testing to make sure that they use the correct genus and species. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one, and be sure to hit the alert button to be notified of new videos each week. For more information, please visit us at getwellfoundation.org.